What's going on guys? I hope y'all having a really good day so far. So in this video, I wanted to talk about this rifle right here and what we have done to it recently <laughs> and uh, kind of what's happened and do a quick recap for those of you that don't know. Um, this gun had a tracer fired in it and it also had a squib load with said tracer. So what that means for those of you that don't know is the bullet never made it out of the barrel. So it got stuck right about here, um, roughly. And basically what happens is the cartridge goes off, the powder burns, and the bullet starts traveling down the barrel, but it doesn't have enough force to completely exit the barrel. Now, with a normal bullet, that wouldn't be a big deal because the bullet would just simply get stuck, you knock it out, and you keep shooting, big deal. Well, rather not a big deal, but with the tracer, it is a much bigger deal if the tracer ignites. So for those of you also that don't know, tracers are the, the bullets that travel through the air that have the, the red light behind them. And what causes that is a highly combustible compound that's actually filled into the back of the bullet. And once that ignites, it, it, it burns really, really hot. And that is very, very bad on steel. Now, normally it's not that big of a concern because the bullet leaves the barrel so fast. Normally the bullets, or rather the tracing, uh, the projectiles compound that causes the tracer effect doesn't ignite until several hundred yards down range most times, or in many cases rather. So with that being said, when they function perfectly, um, there's nothing to worry about. Now, if you get a squib load, uh, like we did, where it gets stuck in the barrel and the tracer compound ignites inside the barrel, that can be really bad. So anyway, that's kind of a quick recap of what happened. We had that exact thing happen with this gun. And for those of you that didn't see the previous videos, I'll try to remember to link those in the description so you guys can see exactly what it looked like inside the barrel. We used a bore scope to actually run down the inside of the barrel with a camera and actually see what the inside of the barrel and the rifling and everything looked like internally. And that allowed us to kind of gauge the condition of it and see if it was even safe to fire because we knew that it probably had caused some issues. So. Anyway, now that we got that out of the way, here's what we've done. We have shot this gun, not only made sure it was safe to fire, but we actually did some load development with it. I had some loads worked up previously before we had ever fired the tracer in the gun, or rather had our squib load in the gun. And I was kind of tossing back and forth the idea whether or not I even wanted to do the load development at this point because of what's happened to it. But you know what? We loaded them, we might as well shoot them. So, I went ahead and shot them. Now, I am not going to have film of me shooting them. I've been really, really busy lately, and it's been really hard to justify being able to set up cameras and, and try to film load development stuff. I just haven't had the time, so I'm sorry I didn't film it for you guys, but I honestly also wasn't really expecting stellar results. Um, but we're going to look at the target here in just a minute, and you guys can, can see what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, I went ahead and filmed some load development using Privy Brass, 155 grain Lapua Skinars, and Accurate 2460 powder, I believe it was 42 and a half grains, and uh, CCI number 200 rifle primer. So we're going to look at the target here in just a second, and you guys can see exactly what we have accomplished. So for those of you that were paying attention earlier, you may have noticed that when I was discussing load data, I never mentioned any differentiation in the powder charge, and that was 100% intentional. The only thing that we altered in this test between shot group to shot group was the seating depth on the bullets, and I measured the seating depth from the base of the cartridge to the ogive of the bullet, not the overall length. So keep that in mind whenever we're discussing measurements later because they're gonna sound really short if you think it's cartridge overall length. Anyway, with that being said, I want to point out that I don't know exactly what length the bullets are touching the lands at because the modified case gauge that I had made was using Privy Brass, which is what we were shooting in this test. And I've had issues with Privy Brass sticking in the past. If you've stuck with a lot of the videos, pretty much every cartridge that I've shot it in, I've always had issues with the brass sticking. So with that being said, Bear in mind that whenever you try to make a case gauge out of something that may have potentially stuck in the chamber whenever you initially fired it, it's probably going to have issues when you're trying to find overall length using it as a case gauge. So anyway, that wasn't really the best method and I ended up just kind of working my way through it manually and didn't really get an exact measurement. But long story short, I, I think that I loaded, and I this is a, a very broad statement, but I believe that I loaded to probably five or ten thousandths jam at the very top end of the loading process. So 
just know that we worked all the way up from 2.210 inches to 2.258 inches. And that 2.258 inches, I like I said, think was around 10 thousandths jam. So anyway, let's go ahead and dig into the groups here. So the first one that we shot was our shortest loading at 2.210 inches. Now bear in mind, once again, this is the base of the cartridge to the ogive of the bullet. This is not the cartridge overall length. <laughs> if you manage to load a 308 to 2.2, 210 inches you've got something wrong so <laughs> don't attempt to do that this is definitely based to ogive here this is not the overall length so just keep that in mind now we're shooting shortest to longest because if you are loading bullets that you intend to jam into the lands at the tail end of the loading process you're going to want to shoot the shorter ones first because when bullets are jammed into the lands they're going to create more pressure than they are if they're going to have some jump so just keep in mind that this is kind of the safer way to go. You want to go from the shorter to the longer if you choose to do something like this. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and move forward. So we shot the, the shortest first and it created about a three inch group, which is really poor out of a gun set up like this. You would want to see much, much tighter groups, obviously. So this is kind of sad to see. Now the second group actually showed some hope here because it tightened up considerably However, the third group, being another three inch group or so, definitely doesn't leave us with a whole lot of promise because there is no pattern so far of uh, shrinking groups. It's just looks like a lucky second group and then the third group kind of goes back to the three inch area we were in before. Now, the fourth group actually squeezed down quite a bit again and that started to give us a little bit more hope, once again, that the longer seating depth might produce some better groups. And the fifth group was a lot more consistent with the fourth in about the same inch and a half, inch and three quarter size versus a three inch that we were seeing prior. Now the sixth group on the other hand was much closer to an inch and I think this is actually just a hair under an inch five shot group. So that was really nice to see that at 2.238 inches, we are getting a lot closer to the lands. So this started to make me wonder if getting closer to the lands was actually going to produce some better groups because when I first started playing around with these bullets, I noticed that they were a lot longer in their overall shape versus like the 155 grain Sierra Match King Palma bullets that we were shooting in previous videos with the Thompson Center Compass. So I kind of wondered if the seating depth was gonna be a lot more critical on these bullets and I'm starting to see that here. Now, they really show their colors, or rather uh, the, the bullets start to show their colors here. This is loaded to 2.243 inches. Now this is where I started to notice resistance on the bolt whenever I was loading these bullets. So that leads me to think that within here or here, these bullets were touching the lands or, or kissing the lands as some people will say. And basically what that means is the bullets are just barely starting to touch the rifling or barely starting to essentially dig into the rifling um, as you close the bolt. And this produced four bullets into one hole essentially and one bullet just outside of that and that was actually a three quarter inch five shot group at 100 yards so this was extremely exciting this is exceptional after what we've seen internally on this barrel i really didn't expect this to happen to be completely honest with you i was baffled when i saw that group get put together now that's not to say that it wasn't a fluke but the reason that i have a lot more hope in something like this is because when you see bullets getting closer to the lands and actually pretty consistently in a pattern shrink down into something like this from this, that speaks very loudly in terms of what that means or rather how critical that is for that bullet to be loaded to a certain depth. So this is really important for me and I expect to see this happen um, more in testing hopefully we're going to test this more to, to validate it and see if that's actually going to be um, a truth rather than just a theory so anyway that's really exciting i just wanted to emphasize that because this is a big deal for this barrel i never expected it to shoot another group like this again but as i've said in the past um, you never know um, looks can be deceiving so 
Number eight and number nine, uh, compared to the last two groups we just looked at, really not all that exciting. And number 10 was pretty underwhelming as well compared to that. Although um, nine and 10 aren't necessarily bad groups. Um, eight, I wouldn't really get too excited about, but um, this and this is definitely what we're looking for. So we're gonna play around with the seating depth a little bit more, rather we're going to test this more, um, probably in between these two areas here and we're going to test some different powder charges and try to get us a good, um, maybe not necessarily a long range load, but a good target load. So anyway, that is going to kind of cover the target. We're going to conclude here in just a second, but um, overall looking at the target, it's really not that exciting. I mean, this is not something that you would drool over. However, when you pay attention to the fact that it is messing with seating depth and you know how critical that can be and how that kind of works um, on the internal ballistics of a gun, seeing something like this leading into that is pretty neat. So we're definitely gonna do some more testing with that. We're gonna go over it quite a bit more uh, here in the future, but that is for later videos. So we're done with this. Let's go ahead and get back to the bench and um, conclude this a little bit. Well guys, that pretty much concludes our video. So <laughs> thank you guys for sticking around. I appreciate you watching. I hope that you got something useful out of this video. If you have any feedback whatsoever, please let me know. I always enjoy hearing y'all's feedback and I like to be able to gauge you guys and see what y'all thinking. So anyway, that's it for the video. If you guys don't already know, we have a Facebook and a website. So if you want to go like the Facebook page, I will leave a link below. And if you want to follow the blog on the website, I will leave a link below to that as well. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification next to the subscription button so that you will hopefully actually get notified when I have new videos videos because a lot of times those videos don't actually get pushed to the audience. So hopefully that will kind of aid in that process. But anyway, I want to thank you guys again for being here. I appreciate y'all watching. I hope that you guys have a wonderful week. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Like the video if you liked it. And I hope to see you guys on the next video. Y'all take care.